Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am not here with Geeky Sparkles. She's working on some stuff right now, but she will be back in a later video. We're going to talk about the comic book industry. We're going to talk about the news that Dark Horse has been acquired by a video game publisher. Uh, THQ, Nordic, and Koch Media's parent group, Embracer, uh, has bought Dark Horse. Now, we knew Dark Horse was reportedly up for sale. Have to be honest, I thought it would be a movie studio that bought them and not a video game publisher. But it seems like the trend now is everyone who can cash out is cashing out. Comic book publishers are cashing out. Uh, the ones that are, are working primarily in the direct market, they're either going to cash out or they're going to go out of business like IDW. So let's talk about that. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. Over 247,000 subs, almost 248,000. Greatly appreciated. We do talk about comics, having worked in and around the comic book industry, uh, publishing our own comics now. You can check out our first, well, it's it's our first comic under the Clownfish Comics uh, uh, imprint. Um, it's actually a reprint of our webcomic Shadowbinders, the first 10 chapters, and we're working on new material as we speak. And we've got a bunch of comic book projects lined up for 2022. Uh, so, you know, we're doing okay. We're actually, we're selling quite a few comic books. We have other business ventures. And, um, you know, but we are looking to focus more and more on on telling our own stories, the kinds of stories we'd like to see and, and hiring some people to help us to do that. Uh, that being said, we're not in the same league as a publisher like Dark Horse. I don't think we're in any danger of being acquired by some giant uh, Swedish video game conglomerate. But I'm looking at the situation in comics right now, and it does appear that the publishers who can get out are getting out or they're merging. I mean, remember the news with uh, Oni and Lionforge having to merge to survive? I think that was at the beginning of the pandemic. And pretty much every one of the major publishers now is owned by some kind of corporation. It's very, very hard to make a living just being a comic book publisher in the direct market. Now, if you're publishing manga or uh, you know, trades or something like that, it's a little bit different. But if you're doing primarily floppy comics, it does seem like, uh, you know, the thing to do is to sell out. And before Dark Horse sold out, we know Valiant sold out uh, to some Chinese entertainment company or some Hollywood studio that has close ties to China uh, to make movies. And it didn't work out very well for them. And they're not doing so hot. And I remember Valiant used to be owned by Acclaim a video game company. So I guess this isn't unprecedented. Uh, IDW is on death's door. They're absolutely going to go out of business here pretty soon or get acquired for next to nothing. I don't know what they have exactly, but they've been losing their licenses all over the place, including losing Disney licenses and Star Wars licenses to Dark Horse. Uh, Image is still pretty much independent for now. We'll see how long that lasts. Uh, Dark Horse now sold to... This Swedish company, DC Comics, owned by Warner, uh, Marvel, owned by Disney. And we could also, I guess, throw Boom in there, too, to some degree. I know Fox, and by extension, Disney has some kind of ownership stake in them, but I'm not exactly sure um, what that is. But it does seem like the thing to do is to cash out. And it's you know pretty interesting. If you remember last year, there was this live stream on uh, Dan Shaheen. I think his YouTube channel, and he had a bunch of of uh, publishers and editors from different comic book companies on. And Mike Richardson from Dark Horse was in that stream, and so was Steve Jeppy. And Richardson looked like somebody just like kicked his dog. You know, I think he knew that things were bad because Jeppy was holding on to publishers' money, and and uh, you know, it seems like. The writing was on the wall then, and I think a lot of these companies, if they weren't thinking about jumping ship from the direct market, uh, then that they they definitely were were uh, kind of pushed into that decision just to survive. I think it's a smart move for Richardson to nope out, you know, while he can. Uh, he's not getting any younger, and in the comic book industry, regardless of what people are telling you, it's not getting any better. The direct market's not really getting better. We'll talk about other 
other parts of the comic book industry that actually are doing well, and there are parts of the comic book industry that are doing well, or comics that are doing well, but it's definitely not the direct market. Uh, we'll go out here this Xbox site covering. I thought it was interesting. I got to give a hat tip to CCG, who is kind of our comic book informer. He sends us news. Uh, thank you so much for that. So THQ Nordic Parent Company acquires Hellboy publisher Dark Horse Comics. Embracer Group, the parent company of THQ Nordic and Koch Media, or Coke Media, has announced that it was entered into an agreement uh, to acquire Dark Horse Media. Dark Horse is probably best known for publishing comics such as Hellboy, The Mask, and Sin City, and has also worked on several licensed comic book adaptations, including Avatar The Last Airbender, which those comics are awesome, by the way. Uh, they're very, very good. Uh, better than Korra, I think. Uh, Star Wars and video game books such as The Legend of Zelda. Yeah, actually, Dark Horse has dabbled in video games before this. They have a lot of beautiful, beautiful video game art books. And uh, I know we bought their Masters of the Universe uh, toy books. And the uh, the giant comic collection has got all the mini comics in it. The acquisition is being made in order to boost Embracer Group's transmedia capabilities. And the games company also has plans for the creation of new video games utilizing the 300 plus intellectual properties owned or controlled by Dark Horse. Oh boy, I can't wait for that concrete MMORPG. That's going to be a lot of fun. I can't express the excitement I feel as Dark Horse moves into this new chapter in our history, says Dark Horse CEO and founder Mike Richardson. The synergies that exist within the Embracer network of companies promises exciting new opportunities, not only for Dark Horse, but also for creators and companies we work with. I've had a number of compelling conversations with the Embracer CEO, and I'm very impressed with him and what he and his team have built. I have to say the future for our company has never looked brighter. Yeah, we're actually going to be able to stay in business because the video games are going to bankroll the comic books, just like the movies bankroll the comic books for everybody else. Um, so yeah, they, they bought many things. Gearbox Software, 3D Realms, Saber Interactive, uh, Flying Wild Hog, and now they've got a comic book publisher too. Because why the hell not? Now, it remains to be seen how important comic books will be to a video game publisher. Uh, I don't know. But, um, you know, this is big news. It shouldn't be surprising news at all. Um, it's interesting, though, that Disney is still kicking the Star Wars license over uh, to these guys. And Dark Horse, I guess they tried to start their own video game division last year or something like that. It was in the ICV2. Um, yeah, they had their own gaming division uh earlier in the year they were going to do a video game division so i you know i think they're just scrambling to survive and again i i really do feel like you know the the more sizable publishers that can are going to cash in their chips uh because the direct market is not getting better and you have to attach yourself to some kind of bigger media to survive you know now that's not to say that you can't do independent comics that you can't do boutique comics or, you know, and, and be successful that way. But Dark Horse has become a very large uh, entity, you know, over the course of the last couple of decades. So, you know, there's a big difference between Dark Horse putting out all the material they put out and, you know, you just kind of making comics with a handful of people and doing crowdfunding or whatever, you know. Well, when you get to this size, it's like, where else do you go? Uh, you cash in your chips, man. That's what you do. So... This story came out, speaking of ICV2, I'll, I'll touch on this real quick. These are the top five comic book business stories of 2021 by Rob uh, Selkowitz, uh, talking about all the change in the comic book industry. And there's a lot of talk out there that comics are fine, comics are fine. Yeah, comics are fine. The direct market's not fine. In fact, the direct market is a shell of its former self. More and more comic shops saying they're not carrying new issues. I'm talking to people who are like, yeah, we don't even carry new issues anymore doesn't sell. It just clogs a shelf. You know, people want back issues. They want graphic novels. They want manga. Uh, they want pop vinyls and tabletop games and all that stuff. Uh, Substack and the talent driven or the talent exodus to venture backed digital platforms. That was a huge one. Again, those guys are fine. They're probably going to make more money over there than they would make working for Marvel or DC. The churn in the middle with Marvel and DC relatively secure in their positions as the top of the market in an ever-growing crowd of up-and-comers vying for the same narrow slice of the slow-growing, slow-growing direct market pie. Competitive pressure is really in the middle. Image, IDW, Dark Horse, and boom. To hold on to the market share and take advantage of whatever they can 
to get a breakthrough hit. Well, if they can't get a breakthrough hit, they sell out. They cash in their chips or they go out of business. And I think IDW is, is definitely headed in that direction. There's definitely some turbulence in 2021. They talked about Boom having Berserker, um, blew the lid off of Kickstarter. Yeah, what they're not mentioning is that all the, uh, all the uh, idiots on Twitter were trying to get them to pull that Kickstarter down. But that actually kept them in the game. Uh, I think Berserker and the Power Rangers books and those multi-million dollar you know, Kickstarters kept them in the game. And Spawn sold really well for Image, and it kept them in the game. If they did not have Spawn or Berserker, I think that Boom and Image would be looking at a, an IDW type, type scenario. Now, for IDW Publishing, it's a story of transition. Is that what we're calling it? The company was still hemorrhaging money this year, then lost their license for Disney properties, including Star Wars, back in September, and appears headed to lose the Hasbro license eminently. John Barber left this week. Uh, out is the EIC. How those moves will play out remains to be seen. Uh, then we've got Image forming this union. Yeah, uh, IDW's toast, man. They're toast. Uh, I talked about N NFTs in the comic book market, uh, nine-figure deals in Webtoon space. These are all things we've talked about, too. Um, that, you know, things are changing. It doesn't mean that the comic book uh, the comic book industry is impossible to make a living. And I think for some people, for smart people who know when to move, they know when to hold them, when to fold them, they'll do very well. Uh, for people who think that it's going to remain business as usual indefinitely, and they can just go work at the, the Marvel, the DC, the image, the whatever for the page rate and the direct market and the comic cons and everything's going to be the same for the next 20 years. They're in for a very, very rude awakening. And uh, I think Mike Richardson's a very smart guy. I think now is the time to cash out. Don't know if comics are going to be, again, important to a video game company, but, um, you know, he's made his money and he can he can retire comfortably, I'm sure. So I'm going to wrap this one up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later.